Welcome to Management TV. Today we're once again with Philip Kotler. Phil is the world's most renowned expert on marketing. He is the creator of the field and has written over 50 books, 10 of which have been in the last five or six years, and has recently published a book on Marketing 3.0. And we're going to learn about it with him today. Thank you very much, Phil, for being with us today. Happy to be with you always, Eduardo. Marketing 3.0, what is it all about? Well, let me give you a preview. Yes. It turns out that I believe most companies are in marketing 1.0, which I will explain. A small percentage are in 2.0, and a few now are in 3.0. And by the way, no company should jump from being 1.0 to 3.0. They better crawl before they get to that stage if they want to get to that stage. A marketing 1.0 company is doing the job, a good job. They are being efficient and profitable, making something for a lot of people. Um, however, some companies have decided to learn more about who they're selling to. Okay. They move from just making and selling a good product to understanding their customers with big databases and, and watching movements and their customer uh, fans and so on. Uh, and and that is 2.0, and 3.0 Befo goes Before further than that. 2.0, if, if you were to describe it with one word or one concept, what is marketing 1.0? Well, 1.0 is uh, appealing to the customer's mind wherever you can find customers. Okay. And 2.0 is appealing to the customer's heart by knowing a lot about the customer and trying to get closer to serving the customer. And now, yes, marketing 3.0. And marketing 3.0 is about knowing the customer is more than a person simply interested in a product that you're providing, but ha is a person who has concerns. Because the world is kind of getting more and more unstable. Uh, there's the question of will the planet run out of resources? Uh, there's the question of poverty, uh, water shortage. And so it's a context for a company saying we care too. We not only want to s sell what you want uh, in the best form possible, but we would like to make sure that we um, understand the world you're living in, and we're trying to make a difference and also make a better world. That's 3.0. In one word would be? Caring. Caring, caring about the planet and the world. Planet. Okay. Let's try to define the basic uh, marketing concepts and apply them to marketing 1.0, 2.0, or 3.0. Sure. For example, positioning. What is positioning? Um, well, positioning is uh, letting uh, your target customers uh, know uh, how, you, how you will differ from uh, the other competitors in offering points of difference and not only points of parity. We use those terms. Most companies have to at least do the same thing the other companies are doing. Then they're on par with that. But you take a company like Starbucks, they not only make sure that the coffee is fresh and that the, uh, and it delivers what coffee should deliver, but they add much more. They're positioned as giving a finer coffee, more types of coffee, and a whole experience in a place where you're going to enjoy the moment of coffee. Being, uh, that's positioning. Segmentation. Uh, segmentation is the recognition you can't serve everyone uh, with equal satisfaction. I'll give you an uh, example of that. Uh, McDonald's uh, believes in a thing they call brand journalism. That is, they stand for this idea of QSCV. Let me explain. Their formula is always quality, service, cleanliness, and value. QSCV. But you know, what they should really emphasize differs from whether they're trying to reach the teenager they're trying to reach the mother of children, the senior citizen. And so within the QSCV, they f have a different m but consistent message with the QSCV for each segment of the market. In both positioning and segmentation, the difference between marketing 2.0 and 3.0 is to add those dimensions of caring society and planet? Uh, yes, right, right. When you're a 3.0, you also have to be a 1.0 and 2.0. They're oh. addition 
more pillars to your marketing strategy? Uh, by all means. Uh, okay. uh, don't uh, become good at 3.0 without being good, uh, basically, with your basic product and your customer understanding. The marketing mix. Yes. The four Ps. Yeah. Is it still a valid concept for the marketing 3.0? Uh, it is definitely uh, still the basis of any brand plan, uh, but there's one addition now called co-creation that was missing. Namely, we, uh, the four P's is what the company does on its own to set the product features, the price, the place or distribution, and also the promotion. But you know, in setting those things, they ought to engage their customers who really love them. Let's assume that some companies have customers who love them. Companies like, uh, for example, Harley Davidson, where people who drive motorcy motorcycles, they often say, Harley, can we help you? You're making an, the next motorcycle. We have some ideas. Can we hang around? We don't want to be paid. We just want to join you. What are uh, successful companies doing to co-create with their companies, with their customers, sorry. Um, they're, they're basically um, building a love affair with their customers. Mm -hmm. uh, and I can say more about um, what we've learned about that. Uh, it's not only in a book, Love Marks, but there's a lot, there's a book called um, uh, Firms of Endearment that have taught us uh, how to um, uh, turn on your own uh, customers as well as your employees. Uh, th there's a lot in, involved in uh, getting closer uh, to your, f f you want to, uh, there's a thing we call crowdsourcing. It's a term used uh, in a book called The Wisdom of Crowds, mm -hmm. which say that there are a lot of people out there who would like to participate, participate in your company in one way or another. Uh, and not only in what your product might become, but also what your advertising might become. Wonderful story about Doritos, which is a snack food like a potato chip. They decided not to use their advertising agency to develop a new ad campaign. And they uh, said to all of you people who love Doritos, any of you who want to uh, create a campaign for us, an advertising campaign, please send it to us. We will choose the best ones and reward you for it. And not only that, the very best one will be used for our next campaign, which means that they are bypassing the ad agency. And they ended up with a brilliant campaign that no ad agency would have probably, with its narrow interest in a few concepts, have come up with. That's crowdsourcing, getting the crowd to join you. Or it's co-creation with your fans. That's a great example on one of the four P's that would be the promotion. Yeah. Let's take uh, on the product side. Yeah. How can you invite specifically some your, your customers or customers to, be, to design the product with you? Well, you know, it's been done for a long time within the B2B world, the business-to-business -business world. Any business firm that's making a technical component will go through an alpha and a beta test. Now, the alpha test is to make sure that the component works, doesn't break down inside the company using your own scientists. But then they select a subset of customers for who, with whom they have a good relation, and they ask them to try the product and to suggest any improvements before they do a launch of the final product. So beta testing is the same as co-creation. Okay. The question is, what about a consumer packaged goods for a company? Um, well, they do it by uh, having maybe a consumer panel. In fact, do you remember uh, research being done at MIT called lead users? Lead users. No. Uh, the uh, the uh, s professor uh, in that area uh, has shown many companies that they will always have some users who are demanding. Mm. In fact, they take the product they just bought from you and improve it themselves. It could be a, a computer where they play around with the software or, or the oh, okay. hardware and make it work better. So lead users is another version of, uh, of watching people take your product and make it better. Let's see co-creation with price. Yeah. Is that possible or that's too risky? How can c customers help you set 
the appropriate price? Well, you know, it's mm -hmm. done uh, in the following way, which most companies can't do it that way. When you say uh, at a restaurant, and this has happened, uh, come in, order what you want, and then pay whatever you want. That is to say, uh, it, and a movie theater could do it. Mm -hmm. Movie theater could say, just come in, watch the movie, and just leave whatever you thought the movie was worth. Okay. Uh, it hasn't spread, but it is a way of saying, uh, let the customer be the judge of, of the value of the, of the product. And finally, if we go to the four P's with co-creation, would yeah. be place, distribution. How can customers help you co-create your distribution channels? Well, it isn't the final customers there. It is the distribution channels that are your customers at the intermediate level. Yes. And, and do you know uh, many of the middlemen have been actually reshaping the product? The history of Walmart is t telling a toy manufacturer their box or their package is too big for the shelf and almost giving the design for a better box or package or actually um, saying we won't accept it at that size. Go back and, and so on. So I would say that, that is co-creation with your distribution system. When you're talking about marketing 3.0, the marketing of the spirit, the marketing of values, values, is that just a marketing strategy or it has to be a management philosophy? Can you treat the client differently from what you treat the employees? No, as a matter of fact, this uh, marketing 3.0 could be renamed management 3.0. Yeah. It really is more than a department's uh, adjustment to opportunities. Um, in fact, uh, the book I wrote uh, with my co-author, uh, co-authors, Marketing 3.0, has a whole section on, on the following. Marketing isn't what you do only to your customers. You've got to market to your employees. You've got to market to your distributors, to your suppliers, because you have to be a company that has partnered with the best employees with the best suppliers, the best distributors, you will never win if you are doing it all by yourself. And, and the key there, it, when I use the word market to your employees, I don't mean to manipulate your employees. Mm -hmm. I mean to a understand them and their needs. Mm -hmm. And uh, not only need for pay, need, need for a psychological uh, satis psychic satisfaction. They yes. should be proud of their company. They right. should say, I'm it's wonderful that our company has off organized a health program so we, there's a gym and we can stay healthy. They've even v asked us to volunteer if we want to for that city in which we operate which has a cleanup campaign. Mm -hmm. So marketing to the employees is to sort of serve them too and to serve your distributors. It's stakeholder theory. Everyone who's a partner should get fair rewards for their uh, a team. It's, it's, it's building a team. Management 3.0, I love that idea. Yeah. Um, there are a few terms that I'd like you to define, uh, I know you're working on. Uh, one would be storytelling and marketing. Uh, yes, I uh, believe that uh, marketing is, is more of a conversation. In fact, what is shaping uh, the image of, of brands is not the company that thinks it's controlling the brand. The brand is being owned by the, co the consumers, and they tell stories. Okay. Uh, and we should, you, we, you know what we can do with, uh, with um, the uh, Twitter? Uh, I, I discovered this, that Twitter is not just about Twittering. Uh, and, and I could be saying I'm in Sao Paulo now mm. uh, to those who want to follow what I'm doing or I could follow what Madonna's doing. All right. But it, it's uh, K 
key words. I could find out what is being said about the Prius automobile. Okay. I just put it as a keyword on Twitter, and if it comes up in any conversations, I may have about 500 conversations which mention the word Twitter. Prius. That means, uh, the Prius. And then that means uh, I can learn, if I mentioned at all, as the company Prius, if I mention mostly favorably or unfavorably, and uh, companies have to see, recognize that they're being discussed. They're, they're in a fishbowl being observed and talked about. So conversation and storytelling uh, is very important. Uh, there's going to be bad stories about you and good stories. I think a company sometimes recognizes a bad story, and the smartest thing to do is say, you know, we've been, uh, some people are, are dissatisfied about something. Uh, we're doing our best to correct okay. that. Demarketing. Yes, I am concerned about maybe reaching and returning to the age of uh, demarketing. Now, what do I mean by that? Imagine the time when we had shortages, like during a war or something. People had to line up. No marketing was done, right? Yeah. Because as, if you're going to do any marketing, you're going to try to reduce the demand, uh, make the line shorter. You're going to raise the price. You're going to m make your product simpler uh, rather than adding features. You may uh, make them just simpler uh, so you can make more of them. So demarketing is to use marketing in reverse, and you do that when you, uh, you get limits to growth, when, you, when you're running out of resources, where you don't have to market anymore. Look at California. You know they have a water shortage. Mm -hmm. uh, they want people to be more careful using water. So what they say is, don't shower every day. Don't water your grass every day. They're demarketing. Inside marketing. Well, uh, the, it's sometimes easier to market to your customers <laughs> than to market to the other functions. I mean, if, if the other functions have a low opinion of, of marketing, sometimes it's deserved, by the way. It's deserved because marketing <coughs> has no accountability. They ask for a lot of money. We don't get the return on marketing investment called the ROMI. Mm -hmm. What is the ROMI? So how do I get to work very well with the manufacturing people who are mad at us because we, we have promotions and screw up their, their manufacturing timing? How do we get the finance guy to accept the uh, $10 million budget that we need? Inside marketing. I will now would ask for inside marketing in the sense of Intel inside or Lycra inside when you put a yes. product in other companies' product, but you still want to market it. Well, uh, this problem concerns a huge number of companies who make some product that is incorporated mm -hmm. in a larger product. We wrote a whole book on that. We published it called Ingredient Branding. Okay. Now, the success stories are three or four. Certainly. Intel is the best success story because <laughs> I would never ask who made the chip, but now I won't buy a computer without the Intel chip. Uh, uh, Gore-Tex, uh, I want out that outdoor clothing. Was that made with Gore-Tex? I want Gore-Tex to be the material. Uh, and, and then when it's uh, the artificial sugar, you want that, that special Sweetener. sucrerel or yeah. something to be... Uh, Neutral make, sweet. Yeah. Now, we have in that book uh, the, the stories of about uh, uh, two dozen companies that managed to get their ingredient asked for, wherever it got lost in the product, but it was asked for. Ingredient marketing. Ingredient Great marketing, idea. Yeah. Thank you very much, Phil, for being with us today. We always learn a lot. Uh, we are uh, hoping to have your new books uh, out soon. Okay. Uh, read them and continue our conversations. Well, thank you very much. It's always fun talking to you, Eduardo. Thank Thanks you. for your questions. And thank you very much for following us on Management TV. See you soon. There is a new tool now uh, that would allow 
to further move into co-creation, that, that is the social networks. Yes. Can you share uh, interesting examples of companies using the social networks to improve their co-creation with the customers? Um, I, I'd be happy to suggest some examples, but first let's be clear that the social networks are now creating a revolution in modern marketing and no company can get away with doing a poor quality job anymore. It's so clear to me that in the future we will only have good companies. We won't have the mix of good and bad companies. Now by a bad company I mean the kind that su can seduce you into buying something and you buy it and you're disappointed and you wonder but then in the old days you couldn't tell many people. You could just tell your wife and family that you bought the wrong car. Today we could broadcast because many people know a thousand other people through LinkedIn or Twitter or whatever. Or Facebook. So only good companies can survive because every company's in a fishbowl. Now with respect to uh, the, the idea of uh, social media, um, companies that are alert they don't want to shift their whole promotion budget to social media. That would be a mistake. Uh, when you have a great campaign with an advertisement, uh, a TV commercials, commercial, it can work wonders. So you keep traditional media, but you shift maybe 10% of the money. One company shifted 50% overnight into the social media, and that was a mistake. Because you've got to learn what works first. So you shift 10%, you hire a nerd. You put in your marketing department a geek. Now, I love those words because I'm a geek and I'm a nerd. <laughs> and these are people who love the new social media. And then you try it out. Now, the, the social media, um, what do you, here's what I think works a lot. I think what works a lot is Facebook. Uh, so you have to have a presence on Facebook. Uh, many companies are on Facebook. Uh, and I, I can tell you how they use them. You ought to be on Twitter. You ought to be on LinkedIn, uh, and you should uh, be using YouTube. Okay. Uh, and there's a few more things, of course. Uh, but get a presence on these media. You said Facebook. I'll tell you how to use it. Can yeah. you share that? Well, um, Coca-Cola may uh, have a, uh, a page on uh, Facebook, and you're just entering a kind of community of people who love the, the product. And uh, they tell you things about the product's history. Uh, they want you to send in comments and maybe your best episode ever with, use with Coke, some memorable experience. Mm -hmm. um, it's a way of uh, in engagement, engaging uh, people to, uh, to, to share stories uh, and the interest in that product with other people who also go to the same site. Do you think that impacts on sales? Um, it, it certainly um, leads to retention of customers uh, and it's, the real question is, is it measurable? Mm. Okay, now what can they do to measure uh, uh, this? Uh, how can they find out how many people went to the Coca-Cola site, had a good experience and ended up sending out a Twitter message? I was at the Coca-Cola site on Facebook and did you notice that uh, they're coming out with a new drink, uh, which I think is great. And now we have to figure out how many people they sent that Twitter message to. And then we should find out by checking on some sample of the Twitter receivers of that message, did they pass it on to others or look at the Facebook site on Coca-Cola? It's not easy to do, but you should have a little faith in that, that if there's been an entertaining experience involved experience that uh, some talk was generated. We talked about marketing 3.0, the marketing of sustainability, society, caring for something, the marketing of the spirit. Is that so culture related that we cannot have a global marketing strategy if we are talking about 3.0? Uh, you, you raised a very good question, Eduardo, because countries are at different stages of development. If you're going to sell your product in Scandinavia, you better be a marketing 3.0 company. Mm -hmm. Scandinavians are very educated. They're very concerned about uh, 
the limits to growth and uh, so on, and they want to see that you're doing something as a company that shows caring. Let's go to an opposite type of country, maybe one deep in, in Africa that uh, uh, doesn't have much of a middle class and mostly poor. There's one com country, I think it's uh, Zambia, that's 89% of the people are poor. They just want to eat something. I don't think uh, being a marketing 3.0 company matters at all. Yeah, so that's the answer to the question. Regarding creativity, yes. how would you approach marketing 3.0? How would you embed new creativity in, in a marketing 3.0 strategy? Well, first of all, the, I want to distinguish between uh, being authentic and inauthentic. Mm. Uh, there's a lot of companies who might see a uh, PR, public relations kind of nice thing about uh, marketing 3.0. Uh, and when that happens, and when they're inauthentic, uh, it's called greenwashing. They're going green, but when you really examine it deeply, I'm talking about companies that build it in their DNA. Now, how do you creatively um, commit to that? You know, companies give out often a lot of money because they care, but the company that just gives it out miscellaneously, that's a good cause, this is fine, and so on. It doesn't add up. And I've made a case in my earlier book called Corporate Social Responsibility that they should really get a cause and make a difference in that cause. Avon, the direct marketer who sells mostly to women, said that what really counts and what worries women, or again, again, look at the whole person. Ask what their life concerns are. Is, is breast cancer. Mm. And they have raised over $100 million over the years to help researchers find solutions to this problem. Uh, so the money isn't spat spattered around. Uh, Motorola likes to give money to uh, engineering schools. Uh, clearly, they want better engineers, and that makes sense. So we examine 40 companies that really have a cause. And why shouldn't a company do that? A company is such a strong engine uh, economic engine machine. Uh, they should, of course, focus on their core products and services, but they are also so much better than government and even some NGOs to make a difference. Yes. And we admire those companies. That IBM does a lot of that. Uh, GE does a lot. Uh, they care. Uh, 